So my name is Christy Lazier. I'm the president of the Area Progress Council for Warren County uh, for the next two years. Um, so I just want to welcome everyone. Thank you for coming today. Uh, we want to thank Duke Energy for being one of our uh, state sponsors for several, several years for that. So thank you to Duke. Um, also, we have our pace setters, uh, our other sponsors, Advix, Bricker and Eckler, Conger, Festo, LCMB, MSP Design, Sinclair and Mason. We thank you for your support. Uh, we'd also like to introduce real quickly, I know some of you in the audience are really going to be very sad that we're not going to go around the room and have us all stand up and introduce ourselves. I know it's one of Chris Pizzuto's favorite things, so I am very sorry, Chris. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. I take small bills, ask a berry. Um, I would like to take a moment to recognize uh, some of our county uh, leaders here. We have Dave Fornshell, prosecutor, if you just want to raise your hand. Thank you. Uh, Linda Oda. Thanks, Linda. Matt Nolan, county auditor, back with Chris Pizzuto. Uh, Barry Wright, our treasurer. Barney, sorry. Began with a B. Ah, I knew I'd do it. Um, Scott Lips, our state representative. Thank you, Scott. Steve Wilson, state senator. Thank you, Steve. And Larry Sims, Warren County Sheriff. Thank you, Larry, for being here. All right, and with that, I'll introduce our commissioners. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's give a round of applause. I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't know he was here. Is Steve Shabbat still here? Oh. Just took off. Oh, okay. Well, Steve Shabbat's also here, so if he walks in, we'll give him a round of applause and embarrass him. Where? He walked out. It's okay, Arla. All right, so now we'll bring our commissioners up here. We have with us today uh, Commissioner Grossman, Commissioner Jones, and Commissioner Young. Please join me on the stage. So we have a few questions that we'd like to ask, uh, we have prepared ahead of time, and then we will open it up to the floor at the end of the program if we have time to say, take some additional questions. So um, we will have a mic traveling when we get to that point. All right, you guys all settled and mic'd up? It's on. I see the light, but there's two little things. I think it's I think it's okay. All right. All right, so our first question um, will begin with you, uh, Commissioner Grossman, is um, from each of your perspectives, what is the current state of the county? Well, I'll, I'll begin by telling you what we do and how we're related to the state of the you know, the county commissioners are, is, an, is an office created by state law. It's not created in the Ohio Constitution. Therefore, we specifically and only have the jurisdiction given to us by uh, under state law. And one of the things, most, one of the most important things we do is we are the spending, the taxing, and the budgeting authority for the county. And we received a AAA bond rating from Moody's Investor Service for the first time in 2017, um, and only a few other counties, I think only two other counties have that bond rating. Um, we also uh, will be talking a little bit more about this. Um, we do very, well, we're very careful with our spending, um, our debt, and um, uh, how we uh, finance the county. And uh, we only have $1 million in general fund debt, which will be retired this year. The remainder, major part of the debt, is with our new jail, which we uh, built under budget by $5 million from its $58 million budget. And that debt for the jail will be entirely, we're slated to re retire it at, at, during 2023. 
and uh, and then of course we had because of our our uh, surplus we had like a 53 54 million dollar surplus at the end of 2021 plus a 12 million dollar reserve carryover and with that we gave the largest uh, state one-year tax break which we called a tax holiday I'm not sure why it was called a holiday, but if that's the term for it, um, about $46.5 million is off of your real estate taxes, which is about $150 per 100000 of assessed value. Commissioner Jones? I mean, I, I think it's vibrant. I think the state of the county is vibrant. Um, we continue to grow. We um, continue to increase our tax revenues as a result. And we continue to provide efficient, high quality services and always looking for ways to um, provide the most value at the, at the lowest cost. And I think that uh, based on all the conversations we have with private industry and residents, I think that they concur that um, the state of the county is is vibrant. Commissioner Young. Uh, I think I'll start with the bad. The, the bad relative to the state of the county is that there's a ground war going on in Europe involving a nuclear power. That, that's not good for anyone. Number two, inflation just hit a 41-year high announced today. Again, not good for anyone. But the good news is it's basically a national holiday for my friend Chris Watkins over there. It's Red's opening day. And number two, <laughs> We all get to live in Warren County, so the state of the county is pretty strong, in my opinion. Nice. All right, thank you. Uh, this one, back to you, Commissioner Grossman. At the end of last year, the Board of Commissioners made a significant announcement. Can you tell us what it was and how it reflects the Commissioner's approach to your governance? Well, I, 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 mean, I believe that was the um, announcement and our enactment of the one-year state tax break, uh, which I mentioned uh, in my first remarks. It demonstrates how, how I, uh, well run I believe that our county is, how vibrant it is. And that was about a $46.5 million real estate tax break. And it's the largest in state history. No other county has given such a large one year tax break. Um, and this was significant because when you look at how much we've been collecting uh, through our real estate taxes, we found that we had a very significant balance that we believed, as our commissioners, that the people that deserved to have that were the people that paid it. So we wanted to give back to the families, the businesses, the people that were paying that tax and paid too much tax. A lot of other counties will keep that money, but we didn't do that. We gave the money back to the residents, both businesses and individuals who paid that tax, and you're getting that benefit in 2022. Nice. All right, Commissioner Young, you often say it isn't just one thing that we do, it's everything that we do. What are some of the ways Warren County sets itself apart? Well, I think as Commissioner Grossman talked about it, I guess for good or bad, I came up with the word holiday. And the reason <laughs> I thought that was germane was, was simply because it wasn't a tax cut. We weren't trying to do a temporary break. It was literally we were giving a holiday. You still all, all of our taxpayers still owe that money. We're simply not collecting this year. Because then you get into a situation, oh, we gave a 50% rebate or we did this. And then, wait, I, I, I owed $2 and I only had to pay a dollar. And then next year you have to pay $2. What is that? It's a tax increase, right? So we didn't want to get into that situation with, with uh, the residents and the property tax owners. So we just said, you still owe this money. But it's simply a holiday. We don't need to collect this money right now. And we do always talk about that it's not just one thing. It, it, we try to say that it's everything. And a prime example of that, uh, in casual conversation with my friend Barney Wright, just mentioned something that we have something called an investment committee, that we talk about interest rates. And Barney's on pace to collect over $500 million from all entities throughout this county. And we have an investment committee that we all serve on. And we talk about things like, what in the world do we do with this money? And it's prescribed under state law, but there is discretion on the things that we do. That we, do we think that this is a high interest rate environment and we need to extend maturities and we work with our legislature and our state or our county treasurer and we go out and extend maturities and we can lock in high interest rates for a period of time. 
We did that. And then when interest rates were cut to these artificially, incredibly low uh, pandemic era uh, rates that we had were basically zero, we said, we don't want to buy long-term rates. We think interest rates eventually are going to go up. And what are they doing right now? They're going up. And Barney literally just told me he made a $10 million investment in a, uh, in a unique circumstance because we all stayed short, and yet he went and did some stuff that he does. And essentially, it's a $50,000 trade-off to the citizens of Warren County just by him doing this one maneuver. So that's one thing that no one will ever talk about, no one will ever see. When we built the jail, when uh, Sheriff Sims in, was the chief deputy, and I first came into office 16 years ago, the, the jail issue was a tremendously large issue. Double bunking, what do we do? How do we overcome this? And we went through all of these various scenarios and eventually did everything under the sun to avoid building a jail, but then we built the jail. But then it was our decision on how do we pay for that. 50, 60 million dollar jail in most political subdivisions, most counties, most cities, when they, when they go and do something like this, they would go out and borrow the money, correct? They would go out and issue a bond levy, and they would pay these things off over a 20-year period. And essentially, we ran the numbers, and we all like to think of ourselves as number folks up here. We ran the numbers, and it was going to cost us something like $40 million in interest payments. So what did we decide to do? I think I actually talked about it with this group probably five or six years ago. We decided to raise the sales tax by a quarter of 1%. Oh, wait, these guys are conservative Republicans. What are they doing raising the sales tax? Because we found out that was the most expeditious and cost-effective way to pay for this jail. We did it with a five-year sunset provision on the quarter percent increase. That actually is going to be ending this year, at the end of this year. So essentially, we've saved 40-something million dollars in interest payments at the same time we collected it in terms of our sales tax. And guess who pays our sales tax? About half of it comes from the people in this room, but about half of it comes from the people that don't live in this county. So essentially, half of our jail was paid for by people that don't even live here. And I think that's a good deal for the citizens of Warren County, because guess who's in our jail, Sheriff? Is it all Warren County residents? <laughs> it is not. Our folks never do anything wrong. So it's people from outside of this county. So when we talk about it's a little bit of everything, that's what we're talking about. It's not one thing, it's everything. And again, it's kind of boring getting into the numbers. We basically try to anticipate less money coming in than what's actually going to come in. And we try, working with all of our wonderful other elected officials, try to budget their budgets for less than what they're actually going to spend. So when you generally bring in more than you spend, and maybe the folks in Washington can hear this. If you bring in more than you spend, that's generally pretty good from a budgetary standpoint. I would agree with that. It definitely gives me a great segue to pause for one second and thank Steve Shabbat for being here today. We tried to introduce you. You were out of the room. Our next question is for Commissioner Jones. Uh, where do you see investments being made in Warren County, and what do you think is the most important for our county to consider in order to remain forward thinking? So that's a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so a couple, of, a couple of things. I think um, this county, this board here, made roughly a hundred million dollar investment back into the county. We did that through, um, Dave and Tom both talked about the, the sales tax holiday, so about half of that investment was invested back in to those who live here in this community to be able to spend in the way that they see fit to best mm. support their own families and, and community. Um, so that was, that's a pretty substantial investment. We're also looking to invest um, dollars in strategic and thoughtful ways to help us plan for the future. So there's roughly another $50 million in one-time money that we're trying to, to be more thoughtful about with one-time resources. How can we set up the, the county for the future? So some of those things that we're looking at include um, not only making sure that all of our communities, all of our residents, 
are, um, have access to high speed internet, but that we're able to create an environment where business wants to come to Warren County, that we're the first and most attractive place um, for businesses to, to locate and existing businesses to be able to expand. So looking to invest in that infrastructure. It isn't often that we have the opportunity to be really forward thinking and say, what is our community gonna need, not just today, but 10, 15, 20 years down the road. This is especially true, I think, when we look at how Warren County sort of relates to the overall state of Ohio. And Senator Wilson here knows um, very, very well about the substantial um, investment in and possible, you know, big, big payday for the state with Intel locating in Central Ohio. And what this really sort of signifies for us as a state that I think about a lot now as it relates to, to how we should be preparing the county in the future is that Ohio is on the precipice of being the location for reshoring uh, in this country. And so we're, we, we are finally, we had this globalization and now we're having this deglobalization. And so how is Warren County going to be on the receiving end of these opportunities, bringing advanced manufacturing, really expanding advanced manufacturing, high tech manufacturing, not just into the state, but into this region and into this county. Um, so thinking about how we're going to deploy these one-time resources and things like high-speed fiber, what that opportunity gives for us as the state is having these larger conversations, as this nation is having these larger conversations about where we're going to produce things like computer chips. So, you know, that, that's the kind of forward thinking we have to be. You know, certainly we can look at transportation. That's also part of, of some of our longer term thinking around putting some of our state, our county re general revenues in a bank to be able to leverage the other transportation dollars that um, are used in the system to get projects from the drawing board to completion better, faster, so that we can take advantage of these opportunities. Those are the kinds of investments um, that we need to be thinking about. And I've talked to um, this, this group before about thinking more strategically around childcare as a workforce strategy. We know that in this county, I mean, we're at 3.6% unemployment. We have less than 650 people on unemployment from this county. And I was talking to Matt Fetty uh, with uh, Ohio Means Jobs today, and um, you know, I was really interested in how many open jobs are there in this county. And so he, he set us a radius around of five miles from 45036, that 45036 Lebanon. And in five miles, there's almost 4,500 job postings. Now let me just tell you, if you have a business that is looking for truck driver, you're gonna post that once, but you may need 10 truck drivers or, or um, warehouse housing. So that's not necessarily 4,500 jobs. It could be two, three, five times as many jobs um, that need to be filled. And so we have to be really thoughtful about building the types of infrastructure that's going to encourage people to get back into the workforce so that work pays and that they can, can um, be able to be hired by your companies. And this is, a, this is the, the type of issue that is going to keep us from from being as competitive as we need to be. I mean, I talked to, 
to people um, who are engaged in the Intel conversation all the time that they're saying, gee, we're trying to figure out how to build up child care, care um, as an essential um, infrastructure to be able to serve just that facility and the related industry around it. We ought to be thinking about how to create high quality, affordable child care so that we can have the workforce we need and to, again, show a competitive ad advantage. Um, the, last, the last point that I um, would make is, and I see some folks who represent the schools and um, community services, I think we, we would be doing a disservice if we didn't ensure that we were continuing to partner with those entities in the county that are trying to meet the behavioral and mental health needs um, of this community. Certainly they existed long before the pandemic. We know that the pandemic has really exacerbated um, many of the, the pressures and stressors uh, and impacts on, on children and families. And so I think it is really forward thinking for us to be more proactive on that um, and I would look towards uh, the One Ohio um, Settlement Memorandum of Understanding that is creating this foundation for resources based on the settlement with the opiate distributors, manufacturers, um, to be able to, as a community, think about what are the types of investments we need to be um, and, and infrastructure we need to be creating in this community to ensure that our um, families are healthy and, and safe and uh, are able to be connected to the workforce. So I think there's a lot of work to come as we're building up this foundation board. And I know um, I, I see many of you that I've talked with as we're trying to get this up and running, our little piece of this statewide picture. Um, but I think that's an opportunity for us to be really strategic. Thank you. Commissioner Young, what are some of the other ways ARPA funding is being invested into Warren County? You can help me with that acronym too, ARPA. There's some words that come to mind when I think of those letters, but I won't <laughs> pronounce them up here. But um, I digress. The, I'll, uh, I'll stick with my theme of trying to be positive and negative. I'll, I'll start with the positives first this time. That with this ARPA funding, <clears throat> we did a couple of interesting things that we might not have otherwise done. Uh, our good friend Tom Isaacs called and uh, last year because Warren County, and you all should be so proud of Warren County leading on so many issues that uh, during the pandemic, um, schools were shut down, you know, the spring of that year when it first happened. Jonathan Cooper of Mason School Superintendent started a working group. He asked me to be part of that. Every superintendent in the county went together. How do we reopen schools this fall? And guess what Warren County did? They reopened the schools in the fall. It was unbelievable. So when we hear all these national pundits, how do we reopen schools two years later? I'm like, would you please just look at Warren County? We've been doing this very safely in a healthy manner. It has worked. This is not rock and science. We can do this. But then again, federal government, state gets involved. And uh, it was not an easy process going into this past uh, school year. So Warren County, again, did something that was a little unique. Tom Isaacs called and said, Dave, we've got a way of doing this. We've developed this pilot program. And it involves testing that, you know, just because little Johnny was sitting by six people at the lunch table and then Johnny tests positive, everybody else at the lunch table has to go miss school for two weeks. That's not a way of keeping schools open. So school superintendents, to their credit, came up with an idea. Let's do this. Let's do this testing. Let's do this. But administratively, it was going to be a ginormous pain in the rear for them to actually do this testing. And their school nurses were already taxed and couldn't actually perform the function of administering and tracking all these tests. They had to go and hire additional nurses. This was not in the school district's budget. Tom Isaacs called us, said, we want you to pay for this. What's it going to cost? $850,000. And I think it took us about two seconds to say, yes, no problem. We're all in. If that's what we have to spend to keep the schools open 
and the kids in school using these federal dollars from ARPA, it literally took us less than a minute to decide we're all in, we're doing it. And guess what happened with that program? It was adopted by the state of Ohio. The entire state rolled that program out. So again, you all should be so proud of what's happened inside of Warren County leading on so many of these issues. Then that's the positive. So the negative, uh, and I would be remiss if I didn't point this out because I think it is appropriate, uh, to this group for years now, I've been talking about something that normally county commissioners and folks in our position don't talk about a lot, but I thought it was so serious, was our national debt and federal spending. People walk out, why is he talking about that? This is crazy. Well, guess what? Right now, we're all seeing why we've been talking about that for so long. These ARPA dollars, in my opinion, there, there was almost two categories. When we first shut down the economy, did the federal government have to take on a war footing to do these PPP funding programs to keep the economy alive when we didn't know what was about to happen? In my humble opinion, absolutely yes. That was a necessity. But pretty much all the excuses for the spending subsequent to that have been completely unnecessary to the tune of, get this number, $6 trillion in the last two years. Additional deficit spending. Big deal. It's a, tree, a T instead of a B. What's that mean? I'll tell you what it means. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not that smart, so I always like to break things down in incredibly simple terms. A trillion seconds will take you 31,000 years to count off. The Ice Age was 13,000 years ago. Think about that. A trillion seconds would take you 31,000 years to count to a trillion. And we're spending trillions now like it's nothing. You really want to get depressed, go to <laughs> the nationaldebtclock.org. Google it on your way out. Don't text and drive, but Google it on your way out and take a look at that. It's over 30 trillion dollars right now. It's up 36% in three years. 30 trillion dollars. Take a guess what that is per taxpayer in this country. $242,500 for every one of you that I assume are taxpayers. You have a debt right now of $242,500. But yet, what's the federal government's answer to this? Let's spend some more. Oh, increased tax, uh, gas prices, what do we do? Let's give everybody a check. Let's increase demand even more. Nothing with the supply. But anyway, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole with this one. But anyway, how does that relate? I think that we didn't need this $46 million of ARPA dollars, and I would be remiss in not saying that very clearly. But we were faced, and we discussed this very seriously. We have been known in the past to occasionally turn back some of these dollars and not spend them just for the sake of spending them. And our board had a very legitimate debate on what should we do with this for that amount of money. And we did the calculus and essentially said that if we turn this away, if it literally reduced our national debt by $46 million, I think all three of us were, we're all in, turn it back. But in reality, what was gonna happen? The state of Ohio was gonna simply reallocate that to Cincinnati, Columbus, or Cleveland. And they would have took, taken it with open arms. And then how did that affect all of you? You all still would have been paying for it. So we decided to take those dollars and try to do something good with it as, as best we Great, thank you. Commissioner Jones, 2020 census reported almost a 14% population increase for Warren County. What are some of the challenges that came along with our county's continued growth? Yeah, it's like second verse, same as the first. You know, that there's, um, I think I just dated myself with that. <laughs> that and reference. I was with you, so it's, it's uh, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you, Senator. Um, so, so it's, a, it's the, same, the same challenges we've had for a long time. Um, you know, certainly workforce is huge. Transportation uh, options for people who live here and work here is huge. Um, we talked about childcare infrastructure um, to support the workforce. And I think we have to um, really think about um, what I what I call workforce housing, you know, market housing, but that is really targeted to um, the the workforce that we have here. I think the last time we were together, I remarked about um, a really you know, grave concern that I had about the county as it relates to 
um, the, 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 kind, the, the people who are here. And I think that if we're not really careful about um, how we think about growth, um, that we could find ourselves in a community where um, teachers and nurses and firefighters and police officers that are serving this community can't afford to live in this community. And, um, you know, we aren't a bedroom community any longer. So we, ha we are a community that's trying to bring uh, manufacturing and um, high-tech industry into this county. And so we need to be able to support those industries through transportation and workforce and meeting those workforce needs. Um, so, you know, Dave is right. It's like there, there was this, this debate around, I can't even say it was a debate because there was nothing that we were debating. I think that we were in, in agreement around sort of the frustration about government spending and what role were we to play in it. But we took the approach that if we're going to um, have our taxpayers benefit from their own tax dollars, that we needed to be very strategic and think about it um, from not a programmatic standpoint, but how can we invest back in the community in a systemic way to meet some of these, these um, longer term needs that this 14% increase in growth um, are challenging us with. So things like infrastructure and, and uh, broadband that we talked about. So it's always a balancing act. It's always a balancing act. But we are growing. Um, whether we want that growth or not, we do get to decide though what that looks like. And so we need to, we need to take advantage of this moment in time and invest in ways that um, are gonna, I think, put us to be at the top of the list as industry that has located previously in other parts of the world are looking to come back to this country and it's specifically at this, in this state. Thank you. Commissioner Grossman, from your perspective, can you tell us some of the reasons why the county continues to experience this vibrant growth? Well, I think uh, it's been already explained to you um, by my fellow commissioners, so I won't say anything else. Actually, yeah, thank um, you. <laughs> <laughs> well, D David uh, Fornshell, our prosecutor, told me to keep it very short, not to tell any jokes, so I really tried to avoid all of that. Uh, but I would say that, you know, look, we, uh, obviously we've had substantial, we're the third fastest growing county in Ohio. Um, we've had substantial business investment over the last year, almost $830 million in business investment in our county, over 720,000 new square feet of facility space. So this is a very vibrant county, both in terms of residential growth and business growth. And there's a reason for that. The reason is because we have an extremely well-run county that believes in conservative principles to control spending, control debt, keep taxes low, and keep quality of services very high. And you all have experienced that. Um, we decided in our two water jurisdictions to soften water, which is going to come on this year. That was about a $35 million to $40 million investment, and it provides better service for our communities. Our engineer continues to do a great job, Neil Tunison, who I don't believe was here today, but he does an excellent job of maintaining our roads and our infrastructure in this county. Those are the types of things that make our county attractive. We have some of the best schools in the state. We all know that. And when our schools came to us, and, and Commissioner Young already addressed some of what we did, but we also, provided two and a half million dollars to public schools to help them with COVID related, related costs. We also included private schools in this. Not everybody did that, but we did, of about $450,000 to private schools. We helped small businesses, we helped child uh, daycare services, and we also helped nonprofits with over a million dollars to 
to help them through the pandemic. We helped renters and landlords who were severely hurt by the pandemic with about a $2.5 million program. This is all short term. This, we weren't creating some sort of constant transfer or help payments. This was just to help with the pandemic. So our county stepped up. We helped. We kept businesses secure. We kept schools open. And we kept our community vibrant. And that's what we have done to help our community and to make it one of the finest communities in the country. Thank you. So oh, before, can I, can I finish oh, no, on? I'm sorry, you don't. Well, I'm, I know they're going to do, and I know okay. I, my wife always tells me that I interrupt her. <laughs> but I, when you all, you're going to get a chance to ask us questions. Yep. And I would say, if there's something that we have done that you disagree with, please tell us. Because we're a very <laughs> open, collegial. Tell him. Commissioner <laughs> Grossman. Uh, D Dave wants the good and the bad, so okay. So, and second off, if there's something that we should be doing, that we're not now. Ask us about that. Thank you. Great, great way to tee that up. Are there any last comments uh, you guys want to make before we open it up? No? Good? All right. Guess um, strong voices are needed. I'm sure it will carry in here, but um, Arla will also get a mic um, from me. Oh, you're taking my mic? That's so sad. All right, uh, raise your hand, please, if you have a question, and we'll zoom over to you. By the way, Steve Shabbat is in the room now. I was not wrong. No. Who's got a question? And I need to come around this way so that I don't make your ears hurt. Was it you, Brian? Hey, who? Come on. I saw, oh, right there. There you go, oh. Linda. Oh, this isn't really a question. But you know, we all hear about how elections have consequences. And I don't want to get political here or anything, but this is why elections have consequences of good things because all three of these guys, they come with different backgrounds, and as a result, Warren County benefits from that. So elections do have consequences, and thank you three for being willing to serve. Thank you. Okay, anybody on this side of the room have a question so I don't have to look ridiculous with this microphone? Well, uh-oh, uh -oh. oh no, we're all in trouble now. Everybody's nervous now. Stand up, Larry, stand up. Oh, I thought I could stay seated. Uh, first of all, just uh, thank you for what you do. I, I, I did love your answer about why Warren County is still successfully grown. I thought it was because of who the sheriff was, but... You gave much better reasons for that. Um, just have a couple comments. One, if, if you hadn't seen the tragedy that has, is still going on in New York with the subway and the shooting and the number of people that were murdered, we see these kind of things going on all over the country. Uh, a lot of times they're in those large cities and communities. And I say this, uh, or say that to say this, you know, as a law enforcement officer for over 40 years, uh, we know things, bad things can happen. And occasionally we have those bad things that happen in our county. But what separates our county is the support that goes on for the law enforcement community. And many of you in here have, have shown that in all kinds of ways. And, you know, I, I like a lot of us who are elected to office, get around to the communities, talk to a lot of people, and, and I get a lot of pat on the back, or pats on the back because of the great job, and in reality, it's not me that does that, it's the men and the women that are out there doing these things, so um, that's also credit to what you're doing, what you've been doing, you know, the ability to, you know, fund the, the necessary uh, supplies, you know, law enforcement, everybody knows we're not money makers. <laughs> or money spenders. Uh, and we also know in this uh, society, in my whole career, we're accountable for what we do and how we do as law enforcement officers, and we want to be, and we should be held accountable. Uh, I can assure you that in this county, 
that's what does take place. And, and it's our commitment to everybody here that that's what we would continue to do. So it is a credit to the leadership in this county. And as a taxpayer, personally, I, I truly love what's going on in this county. And, and I've only been here you know, 22 years, roughly. So, and, and then I'll leave with this. The sad thing is, is there's a potential somewhere in the future that, that I might consider moving. I, I won't be able to find a location I know in this state that, that replicates the leadership and the conservative mentality that we have here. So thank you all very much for that. Any other questions? I'd like to ask Congressman Chabot, who's his favorite county? <laughs> Ask him after the election. <laughs> I love Warren and Hamilton County. <laughs> and if you were wondering why I left before, I had to, uh, one of the really honors that I have is to periodically call young men and young women, uh, high school age, uh, and in this case it was a, a young lady uh, who we were letting her know that she was receiving an appointment uh, to the Naval Academy. So that's why I had to, oh. had to step out. So anyway, thank you. I'd recommend a new book, though. <laughs> It's an oldie but a goodie. Is that the only one the Speaker of the House can understand? I don't know. I didn't say that. I'm, I'm... All right. Any other questions, comments? I will just share one. I was with a lot of you in this room oh, hello. on um, a, a drive-in to Columbus last week. And so it was exciting to hear um, from a manufacturer's viewpoint, my family has a manufacturing business here in Lebanon, um, but they were saying that all of the proposals of things that we need help with, that we want to do to make our county better, all of these proposals coming from Warren County are some of the best prepared requests that they see in the entire state. And I think that says a lot to not only our commissioners, but to our guys in economic development, to our engineers, there are just so many great outlets of talent that we have in Warren County that I think, I hope all of you take advantage of. Please consider getting a hold of the Area Progress Council if, if you need direction. That's why we're here, to help connect you with all of these wonderful sources of talent. So I just wanted to share that with everyone because I thought that was awesome to hear that Warren County is one of the top counties submitting proposals. And with that, I think we are done. Thank you so much for being here today.